All right, I'm uh, Matt Kelsick. I run the uh, Belize and Honduras programs uh, for us here at Yellow Dog Fly Fishing. And uh, today we're gonna go over uh, what I like to bring and some of the basics uh, on packing uh, for a trip to Belize. For flies for Belize, uh, you're typically focusing on, you know, three main species, uh, permit, bonefish, and tarpon. And we're going to go over, you know, kind of some of the general flies that you'd want to have uh, before you're heading down there. Um, starting over here, uh, different permit crabs, uh, you know, pattern specific stuff, you know, raghead crabs, bower crabs. EP crabs, merkins, you know, it kind of runs the uh, runs the gamut. Um, definitely stuff like this, the uh, bower crab, um, super popular, was invented in Belize. That's a standby north south, uh, kind of anywhere you go. Um, you know, some of the newer style stuff. You know, Doug McKnight's Danger Muffin's a great one. Um, you know, Alec Gerbeck's Flexo crab. Uh, EP crabs, um, just having a good mix. Uh, you can kind of see, you know, having different colors, olives, tans. Uh, you can throw some whites in there. Uh, they do make, you know, some kind of crazy blues and pinks, but but definitely sticking with the more natural white, tan, olive uh, is going to be the way to go. Uh, moving over to bonefish flies. Um, You've got a couple that can cross over, uh, you know, permit do eat shrimp too. Um, so having bigger, you know, spawning shrimps, avalons, um, you know, even uh, these kind of mantis shrimp, uh, those are good to have. Uh, and that they'll do a little of, uh, you know, double duty. You know, some of the spots in northern Belize, um, you know, they're eating shrimp just as much as they're eating crabs. Uh, and you'll notice, you know, some of these, you know, the body styles uh, can be similar enough that, you know, if you're stripping something that's got a soft body like an EP crab, uh, it's going to, you know, get into the zone of a big spawning shrimp. So, um, you know, the different patterns are good and having, you know, some bigger shrimp for your bonefish uh, is beneficial uh, if you encounter a permit. Uh, other stuff is going to be, you know, a little bit more specific, um, you know, small gotchas and crazy charlies. Um, probably the most important one you can have for Belize uh, is going to be a bonefish bitters. Uh, little epoxy head, some deer hair. Uh, that's another, you know, invented in Belize for Belize. And, uh, you know, definitely have that and in and, and some small sizes, eights, even tens. Um, in addition to the standard, you know, sixes and fours uh, is going to be good. You know, everything else uh, is, is, you know, pretty general bonefish bear. So if you've got flies left over from a trip to the Bahamas or some stuff left over from a trip to Mexico, there's, there's a lot of crossover when it comes to bonefish. Um, you know, pinks, uh, that's definitely where you're going to see some of your different, you know, brighter colors would be the bonefish flies. You know, these pearls and pinks, um, you'll see that more so than you would with uh, your permit crabs. Uh, moving on to uh, big game stuff, you know, tarpon. Um, you know, for tarpon, you know, tarpon toads, um, you know, tarpon streamers, uh, you know, EP stuff, you know, feather and fur stuff, it's all going to work well. Um, from my experience down there, you know, the tarpon are, are less particular on what the fly is. Uh, more so than, you know, less so than like what color uh, it would be. So, you know, whatever you've got, whether it's, you know, EP tarpon streamers or, uh, you know, black deaths or, you know, stuff along that line, um, having a mix of colors. So, you know, these tarpon toads having a you know, dark one, a light one, you know, having a neutral pattern in between um, is definitely a way to go. Uh, if you had to pick probably a favorite streamer for anybody down, you know, tarpon down in Belize, EP peanut butter, uh, you know, every guide uh, in Belize, top to bottom, north to south, uh, they like to see EP peanut butters. Um, Black deaths are another popular one. Um, in situations where you'd be fishing a channel with a sinking line or, you know, first light, last light, 
uh, bigger profile is good. So whether it's you know a black and purple or a black and red, um, anytime you get into those low light, deep water situations, bigger is better. Um, tarp and stuff. Uh, you know other stuff that you'll encounter in Belize, um, snook, barracuda, uh, you know little you know gurglers for snook. You know a couple different colors uh, is always good. Uh, a lot of the tarpon flies are going to work well for snook. Um, you know, big barracuda stuff. Uh, it's always fun to, to have a, a barracuda rod, uh, you know, waiting in the wings uh, in case you encounter it or other fishing is kind of tough. Uh, so we, we covered kind of basic patterns. Uh, I want to show you kind of how I lay everything out. Um, there's one of these big boxes. As you can see, you know, a bunch of dis different colors. Uh, kind of a mix of those different body style crabs. Um, come over here, it's a little bit more, you know, the shrimp stuff uh, that you'd be using down there. And then um, on top of that, I kind of work out of these boxes. Um, these ones are the ones that I'm tying or buying flies or whatever. Those will get completely maxed out. And then, you know, I kind of keep some other stuff, you know, a little bit more spaced out to fill in um, when I'm fishing or uh, you know, if I know, hey, I've only got a short trip to Southern Belize, you know, I'm gonna kind of maybe pare this down. I don't need to have that whole box coming in. Um, you know, same thing here with, you know, some bonefish stuff. Uh, these fish pond boxes are great. You know, got the tacky stuff that holds the flies, a little bit waterproof, super durable, which is nice. Um, tarpon flies. You know, same thing, kind of a bunch of different colors, different profiles. So, you know, as, as you can see, you know, your blacks and purples, oranges, chartreuses, reds, uh, kind of have a whole different bunch of colors. Um, I like stuff with a lot of marabou, so you'll see, you know, stuff with, you know, marabou and hackles, uh, more so than synthetics, you know, tarpon toads uh, withstanding. Little bait fish patterns are also great to have. Um, you know, stuff like a, you know, classic, Deceiver, it's always a good one to have. Um, you know, chartreuse and white, blue and white, different sizes. Um, you know, just having a little bit of variety is, is kind of how I've always uh, found it best. Secret weapon, gummy minnows. Uh, a lot of things elite these, snapper, barracuda, tarpon, snook. Uh, those are always uh, a good last ditch effort to have in the box. When you're on the boat, uh, salt water is not good for uh, metal, so uh, having somewhere to, you know, break things out that you've fished and tried or, you know, you're switching flies, you don't want to just take that fly and put it right back in your box because it's going to rust everything else out. Uh, so I like to have, um, you know, I got these, these fish pond sushi roll things that roll up and are great. You can, you know, run that under the sink or the shower when you're back at the lodge uh, to keep everything, you know, nice and fresh. Um, you know, fly pucks are also great. So whether they're from, you know, your local fly shop or, uh, you know, these, these kind of specialty ones that are a little bit more, you know, heavy duty, uh, somewhere where you can separate what you fished uh, from what you're going to fish. Because, uh, you know, unlike a, a trout stream where maybe you're changing flies 30, 40 times in a day, matching different cycles of a hatch, uh, you may not use that many flies. I mean, you could go down there for a week and use a dozen flies and, that, and that's it. So you don't want to be putting stuff that you've used back into a box that goes into your bag and then sits in that bag till you come back to uh, your next trip and you open it up and everything's got rust on it and then uh, you're starting from scratch. You've got everything that you could bring. Um, question we get a lot of is, is how many flies should I bring? Um, and that, that's always tough. Uh, as you can see, I have a lot of flies and uh, unless I'm going on a really short trip, it's probably gonna, I'm probably bringing everything. Um, Generally, you know, if you could have a couple patterns and a couple colors and a couple sizes, um, you know, so you'd be looking at, you know, two dozen flies, three dozen flies maybe um, for a trip is kind of going to be your, your standard stuff. Um, a lot of the lodges have small shops. You know, the guides have some stuff that they like to tie or, you know, kind of, you know, private reserve things. But um, generally, if you come down with a decent little selection of what we recommend, um, there's going to be stuff that works and uh, you're not going to be showing up and, and having a bunch of stuff that, you know, is, is overkill. You know, this is kind of overkill, 
but um, you know, having a good mix is always important. And, and I'd say to put a number on it, you know, two dozen, three dozen flies, you know, 24, 36 flies is going to be a, a good number to cover you for most trips.